Welcome, fellow Waxers, to my Let's Play of Tyranny. I've been looking forward to this game because I've always been a fan of games with this uh, isometric strategy genre, such as Neverwinter Night, Baldur's Gate, Icewind Dale, and so on. I have not tried this game yet. It just came out today, and I've been looking forward to playing it. So, we will be doing the tutorial as well. Uh, I will be putting on Trial of Iron, which means that there will be no save game, or only one save game permitted in this uh, playthrough. I will also have it of hard difficulty. I see no reason to torture myself with Path of the Damned. It is too hard, as it says. That the hard difficulty is suitable for the players, but I'm too much of RPGs, such as Pillar of Eternity, will be for charge. So I have a requirement that requires micromanagement and optimization of stats, writing some skill spells, and abilities. And the AI is more efficient and it's really more difficult. What we will be doing. Let's jump right into it. Let's hope uh, the loading time won't be too bad. I just thought Jose was gonna crash. This is actually the second time when I was doing it. This time it worked wonderful. Now let's see. For over 400 years, the armies of Kairos the Overlord have swept across the known world. All who stood against them fell before their might. Even the Archons, women and men of immense power, were forced to kneel, chained to the Overlord's will. Now Kairos's final conquest has come to our corner of the world, and two of the Overlord's armies compete for the honor of taking our lands. The elite disfavored, and the teeming horde of the Scarlet Chorus. The voices of Narad, spymaster and archon of secrets, guides the fierce and undisciplined masses of the Scarlet Chorus. With each battle, the Scarlet Chorus grows stronger as the defeated are given a simple choice. Serve or die. Grave and Ash, Archon of War and the Overlord's most loyal general, leads the disfavored. Though small in number, Kairos's ironclad legion has never met true defeat in open battle. Watching over the two generals is Tunan, the Adjudicator. Archon of Justice, eldest of Kairos's minions. Tunan brings Kairos's laws to newly conquered lands. Aided by the Fate Binders, judges and executioners of the Overlord's laws. You were among the youngest of the court of Fate Binders when Kairos's armies came to our lands. How could we have known that the fate of thousands would rest in your hands? Interesting, so I'm actually a bad guy in this. I guess that's why it's called tyranny. Now let's create our character. Let's go for male. Average. I'm gonna try to create myself and I am pale. In the Northern Empire, where you were born, men enjoyed equal protection under the laws of the overlord Kairos. In the southern lands of the Tears, only men may own or captain ships. The real estate is restricted to women. Men may lease a durable ownership of the lands in the, in for the Tears always passes to the eldest daughters or sisters. Most sons enter their father's profession by their mid-teens. Those without a profession or family lands to work can find purpose by pledging service to one of the Overlord's mighty archons. Criminals, derelicts, and others are often conscripted into the armies of the archons. A child cannot forge his own sky scheme. He will certainly find one in battle. Interesting. Let's continue.
excuse me. On the lookout. Right. <laughs> you learn something every day. Yes, I may forget a few more words. That is just wonderful. This will be fun. Ah, got it. Quiet down. I got it. Let's go with the sneaky one. Any tattoos? Guy to be maybe a ranger or a mage. I think that is suitable for archer. And I like the colors as well. Let's change it up. There we go. Okay. And a portrait. It's a woman, won't work. Just let's do an inception in general. Don't see me to be too fitting. This guy maybe. This guy. But we're not black, so that won't really work. There we go, if we didn't have a beard. Maybe they should have started with the portrait, so we have something to go for. Someone who just looks the part a little bit. Yeah. Well, sorry about this. I'm very keen on making a true character to type. Or we could just do this. And then let's be black. Well, that's their color. How do we go back? Ah, here we go. Yeah. Great. And we will be this guy. Let me have a tattoo. That's fine. Hair different. No beard. Make this guy as true as we can. Okay, we'll just go with this. Okay. History. Pit fighter, hunter, guild of princes, the sign, soldier, lawbreaker, to pretend to spread up into a in subordination. In subordination. Finally, the Viper tribe came across the smoking ruins of your village, and when the beast's matriarch found you frozen but unafraid, why did you to the new beast to protect your tribe? For years you lived with these wild beasts men in their migratory homes throughout the mountains, but the founding vipers were a dying breed. These long winter took very tall in the last once the dwindling tribe was to be in his land, his favorite soldiers came to his palace of the ground established for the tribe to come. Finding a human amongst the twelve tribes, the disfavored soldiers made the point of taking them 
Captivity and delivered into his court. Okay. server Amazon typical warrior let's go with the short bow what else did we get we have hopple and uh, target your enemy's feet with a ranged attack hop with them if successful so this is our slow delay your aim to focus on hitting the target's heart gain additional accuracy for this attack and leave the target bleeding Lower bleeding, we can choose actually. Let's go with the hard shot. Secondary expertise. Ah, so we can get two expertise. Well, let's then go with dual wielding. So we can actually get four mace. I like thought of dual wield. Slice. Wheel. Throwing weapons, one hand uh, a careful place attack that attempts to open a major artery, leaving the target bleeding. Really like the bleeding stuff, huh? Or we can get the, the slow. Let's get the dual. I think it's good to be the jack of all trades, not specialized yet. We will do that later. Wait. I like. Let's just specialize. I think that's fine. Let's hope we find a tank early on in the game. Now, what else do we need? Character colors. Uh -huh. well, let's go with the purple and the black. How about if we change them up? I like this. And our banner custom soldier. Ooh. To name, what shall our character be named? Ah, this is where I wish I had a live stream going and I could let you guys help me out with some hints. Well, maybe for the next play, but at this time, we will be. Determines the physical strength of the character. Increasing might leads to more powerful attacks. Strong abilities as well as increasing defense. Except for strong defender for you because you train with strength. This one, finesse attribute, describes the character's physical and mental precision. Finesse is used to control accuracy of attacks and spells as well as increasing defenders. Finesse is to reduce a Depends how often 
spell strength and spell defense. And Lots of the finesse. There we go. So bows. Yeah, we're just maxing out the bow. So what is the support skills? Athletics determines a character's ability to travel difficult terrain as well as their ability to execute complicated moves in combat. Athletics is also used in dialogue to determine your ability to intimidate or physically overpower someone. Okay. Dodge. Skill defense against ranged attacks from bows, javelins, and magic spells. Higher skill ranks will reduce damage taken or even cause enemies to miss their attacks altogether. Substitute, subterfuge. Subterfuge skill determines the character's ability to move unseen through their environment to detect them and avoid hidden traps. Okay, we want dodge, subterfuge, athletics. Bows for the rest. Okay. Conquest. Select the conquest option will allow you to play through curious conquest of the tiers. Tires. Choosing how your character was evolved in the invasion. This gives you the most control over the starting state of the game and how other factions will react to your character. Yes, let's do that. All the world has fallen to Kairos. And now the Overlord's eye is on the Tears, our home. The last corner of the world free of Kairos's reign. Two armies, the Disfavored and the Scarlet Chorus, march south from the Northern Empire, the last realm to fall to Kairos a century prior. In the early days of 428, Kairos' armies arrive at the Gates of Judgment, the mountainous border that we Tearsmen so long believed unassailable. Unable to agree on a unified plan of defense, the various leaders of the Tears sit and wait for each other to deal with the conquerors. Until it's too late. All right. Conquest. During the conquest, you will decide your character's action during Kairos' invasion of the Tears, shaping the world through which you will adventure over the course of the game. Each choice you make affects your character and how major factions of the Tears respond to you. Your decisions matter. Choose wisely. 428, one of Kairos' conquest. The Bastard City stood on the northern border between Kairos' empire and the Tears, built upon a natural harbor of the, at the crossroads between realms. The city was a nexus of commerce. To the Tears, it was the center to, of all wealth. To a northerner, it was little more than a backwater trading post. Its symbolic status as a gateway to the continent made it a natural target, first target in Kairos' military conquest. Circumstances were ideal for you to prove your worth, as a soldier in Kairos' army. Taking this city would send a message to the rest of, of the Tears. Kairos' will is, Kairos's will is insurmountable. Kairos is a name out of a legend. For centuries, the Overlord has consolidated powers, powers sending vast armies to swallow in Kairos' realms. The most powerful mystic the world has ever seen. Kairos can, send, can issue edicts, magic proclamations that level cities, spread pox, sunder the lands, or change the course of the season. So I probably need to make a choice. Select the token on the map to begin. Okay, Gates of Judgment. In the first major engagement of the war, Kairos' armies crossed the mountains and established a foothold or infiltrated the tiers. Both armies sent their forces to prepare the way.
History will remember the Gates of Judgment as the first battle of, of the conquest, but the real combat unfolded with advance units of both armies preparing for the coming war. With his favorite and scholarly crusade, each had a plan to infiltrate the capital city. Which army did you join? You joined Scarlet Chorus or the Hispade? Wait, wait, wait. Conscript enemy fighters for the Scarlet Chorus. A to this favorite scouts. Okay, so we need to choose between the two, I guess. Hmm. Let's A to scouts. Lend your ability, your, your skills to the elite this favorite scouts and capture a border garrison. Graven Ash insisted that an early victory in the offensive would boost the morale of his troops and dim diminish the haunt, haughty overconfidence of the southerners. Or in the Scarlet Chorus as they raid villagers and small towns, conscripting every able-bodied man and woman into the army. The voices of Nered emphasized the rewards of conscription and slavery over wants and bloodshed, but apparently his soldiers needed a reminder. Last of the northern generals to stand against the rulers in ages past, Archan Raven Ash now serves Kairos as supreme commander of the Disfavored Legion and is charged with conquering the Tears. Raven Ash shares a powerful bond with the soldiers under his command and regards them as family. Okay, well, let's go with this. <laughs> modest border defense and collaborated on an organized attack that would leave the enemy uncoordinated and cut off from aid. You oversaw their preparations and offered your opinions on the strategy. When the clashing of swords and spears fell to silence, followed by the cheering of disfavored, foul, disfavored scouts, you were the least surprised. Oh, I didn't see what options I had over here. Fair enough. Containing the fire. The bastard city resident fire mage is threatening the first leg of the conquest. Kairos' forces put a stop to their unchecked power. Or... Inside agent. Within the border garrison, captured by your disfavored allies, you traveled ahead of Kairos' armies and lurked into the shadows of the bastard city. You decided that converting one of the locals to Kairos' side would help bring the city to its knees. After all, corruption starts from within. You lured the hot-headed mages to an ambush where a legion of disfavored waited to spring the trap. The soldiers were hungry for a chance to subdue the Arkham brand of the Tears Resistance, or you tricked the guild elders into meeting with the voices of Nerat, the Archon of Secrets. The Archon was notorious for his cruel and mysterious interrogation technique, and mages were never seen again. Just too cruel for me. You enlisted a bitter captain of the guard to sell military secrets to the disfavored better that, mil that Kairos' forces marched to their next inevitable victory, well informed. You came to an arrangement with a well-connected smuggler who knew how to sneak agents of the Scarlet Chorus behind the city walls. The Scarlet Chorus were better operatives, good soldiers, and this work requires a subtle touch. Let's do that. At the exception of this short payment, smuggler and smuggler were to the Scarlet Chorus and intersected the city. Armed with maps of the subterranean layout, your Scarlet Chorus allies fanned out to occupy various city districts undercover. They spent the ensuing weeks murdering key officials and sabotaging defenses wherever possible, weakening the Tears capital under the very nose of its leaders. Trail of the Bastard City. The tactics of infiltrating of infiltration placed you in the Bastard City ahead of the main armies. Your work softened the city defenses for the rival Tears forces, but you wanted a decisive gesture that would give your allies a meaningful advantage. How did you assist in the fall of the Bastard City? You challenged the commander of the Bastard City defenses to an honorable fight to the death. This is favored wish to spare soldier life for the battles ahead and civilian lives for occupation. And that will give me warrior's respite. Stand your ground in the face of defeat. During this time, you will regenerate health rapidly, but your damage is significantly reduced. Ah, that's the tank guy. Tank thing. Spreading the word of Kairos, you converted the poor and disaffected into a hidden army of the Scarlet Chorus. Once the dust settled, the army wished to bolster their troops with these sleeper cells. That would give, give me searing palm. Gather heated energy into your hands and release it onto a foe. The target knights burning over time. So basically burning touch. What is this? 
spread fear through assassination. Keeping to the shadows, you eliminate the leaders of the Bastard City one by one, which would give me concealing shadows. Create a cloud of, of obscuring shadows and thus, for a short duration, enemies that use physical attacks against you have a significantly increased chance to miss. During this time, your attacks will also be less effective. Exactly what I want. Trail of the Some deaths were quiet and unnoticed, while others were gruesome beyond words. As a wave of murder overtook the city's elite, your dread, your deeds swelled in infamy. Well before the armies arrived, no one in the bastard city felt safe in their homes, much less behind their walls. By the time Kyrus's forces crested the horizon, the city was fearful enough to throw open the gates and welcome their new protectors. I hope there will be way too many choices for this episode we could cure this. Bastard City settled into a new state of normalcy, with every tower displaying Karis's banner. Your name was whispered alongside rumors of a decorated career to come. The armies divided into two fronts and migrated south. Tunan sent word that you were to join the next frontier of Karis's conquest, either as judge and overseer of the settlement of Lethian's Crossing, or as a worldwide advisor with the armies advancing into the realm of Apex. Let's go Apex. Add it as a judge. Yes. Four twenty nine TR, second year versus conquest. Apex. The mountain nation of Apex ruled for generations by the queens of House Vendrian stood at the heart of the tears. No army could bypass the landlocked realm without leaving their flank exposed to attack. By the second year of the war, the disfavored and scholarly chorus had pushed deep into the tears. Elements of both armies were dispatched to conquer Apex. Tunan assigned you to accompany them, tasked with bringing Kairos' law to the territory as well as keeping an eye on both armies. Okay. Battle of Edgering Pass. The disfavored sent their most destructive ally to crush Edgering Fort. Cairn, Arcane Archon of Stone, buried this stronghold under an avalanche triggered from the surrounding Sorry about that. It's triggered by the surrounding mountains. The Scarlet Chorus were promised captured enemies for recruitment, yet none survived the onslaught. The Chorus demanded compensation. Or denial of strength. The school of water mages loyal to the Tearsmen posed a substantial threat. The disfavored wish to annihilate the school, while the Scarlet Chorus insisted on capturing the mages, wishing to learn of their craft. His favorite wish to annihilate the school. No, let's let's go to capture them because that might mean that we can get a water mage, which could potentially sound like a healer. Or I might just have watched too much Avatar Cartoon as a kid. Anyways, let's go. <laughs> though countless lives were lost, taking the mages into custody, the Scarlet Chorus praised your name as they dragged the beaten elders of the school to the voices of Nerat's tent. As a wave of screams and incoherent pleas reached their crescendo, the Scarlet Chorus charged soldiers outside cheered for their archon. The disfavored adjourned to their camp in grim silence, claiming the Chorus lacked the will and desire to fully wipe out all traces of the enemy school. Poisoning the well. Hoping to break the siege, Scarlet Chorus agents poisoned the Apex water supply in secret. Days later, uninformed, disfavored scouts died of illness. Outraged by the failure of communication, the disfavored demanded that the chorus agent be turned over to punishment. A captive captain. In Kairos's forces captured a, when Kairos's forces captured a celebrated enemy hero, the armies bickered over his fate. The disfavored wanted him set free to convince his peers of Kairos's mercy. The Scarlet Chorus wanted him played and staked as an example. Let's set him free. Shocked by your the enemy 
Navy Captain Bao to deliver the message in full and paid his respects before departing for his encampment. Though typically more uncompromising, the disfavored praised your innovative thinking. The, Scar the Scarlet Chorus despised what they viewed as resources wasted, only to release a known enemy back into the wild. The defeat of Apex and inevitability, the armies of Kairos met to discuss how to put an end to this stage of the contest. Both armies agreed to send an offer of parley. Along with their acceptance, the enemy requested that you appear at the meeting. Word of your fare, feelings had apparently spread to their ranks. How did you orchestrate the surrender of the realm of Apex? Through days of meditation, you negotiated the surrender of the, of the battle to Kairos' forces, putting an end to further bloodshed. Taunting the Queen of Apex into striking you under a banner of truce, you baited the Queen of Apex into a duel and slew her, frightening her vassals into submission. Now let's let's go with this. The four enemies were loath to part with their lands, but they were even more reluctant to continue a war they were losing at every turn. The Tearsmen are, stop, are a stubborn lot, and despite their grim situation, it still took days of discussion and diplomacy to show them the madness of tenacity. On the third day of meditation, the rules of Apex finally submit to your terms of surrender, putting an end to the war in the valley and freeing up Kairos' forces to march deeper into the tears. Looks like we have two more dots up here. Okay, the land of Apex finally rested in the hands of Kairos' forces. The Scarlet Chorus paused to revel in victory while the disfavored prepared for the next fight, affording themselves but an evening's rest. Kairos' armies radiated out from the conquered citadel and worked their way across the tiers. The disfavored and scarlet chorus aimed to dominate as much territory as possible in the coming year. Your distinguished reputation in Kairos' military left the choice of your next destination yours to make. Okay, so Kairos has dispatched the Arkham Stone to subjugate the nation of Ashur. Kairos' Conquering gaze fell upon the Velen Citadel, its treasures, its knowledge, its secret. Or Stalwart. With its easily defended position and rich military tradition, the realm Stalwart was the most formidable realm in the tiers. Well, let's go for the Divide and Conquer. Yes, Velen Citadel. Vellum Citadel was an archive and library of massive scale. Its inhabitants were known at the School of Ink and Quill, a circle of mages that centuries ago carved out their own mountainous refugee, ref, refugee on lands unsettled by other major realms. Legend said that the Citadel housed a treasure trove of arcane knowledge. The overlord spies infiltrated the school and confirmed as much. The time was right to send a detachment to the Great Library Fortress and force the scholars to yield to Kairos. The detachment of Kairos' army marched on the Vellum Citadel, expecting an orderly surrender. As they neared the main gates, a blast of arcane energy struck the commanders dead. Suddenly, the highest ranking officers alive, Kairos' forces looked to you for the next steps. The call weighed on your mind as it had an immediate influence on soldiers' losses. Or, Song of Ensnarement. Siren, arcane of song, used her power to enthrall enemy mages who crept beyond the citadel walls. After Kairos' forces rounded up the arcane practitioners, the disfavored began executing the new captives before they could share dangerous knowledge. A crime under Kairos' law was the Scarlet Chorus. Huh. You calmed the disfavored with a compromise. The sages' mouths would be bound with iron, riddles preventing them from speaking the forbidden knowledge, or Punish the disfavor for executing mages bound to the Scarlet Chorus, ordering that settled disfavor soldiers soldiers be giving the arcane Archon of Song as her personal bodyguards. Well, let's go with Chain of Command. You ordered the disfavor to advance the shield wall. 
knowing that a handful of Karras' elite soldiers, soldiers could hold off the attack until the Scarlet Corps retreated. You knew that this favorite would despise you for any losses at the Scarlet Corps' expense, but that was a small price to pay for saving lives. Or, you ordered the expendable Scarlet Corps to attack, commanding the disorderly mob forward to give the elite disaver the chance to withdraw. Though it cost him maneuver in terms of lives lost, this assured the survival of the most capable and effective soldiers. Yeah, that wouldn't be the real the real thing to do when this is their intentions. <laughs> the sacrificial move that it was, those from the Scarlet Chorus who ran headlong into battle made promises of a reckoning upon their return. Thankfully for you, hardly any of them limped back in one piece. Those few who survived made fevered whispering their grievances, naming you as a villain for the Scarlet Chorus. This favorite learned of a hidden enemy enclave and sent scouts to locate it. They never returned from their mission. The remaining disfavored soldiers demanded that you send the Scarlet Chorus to retrieve their scouts, but the Scarlet Chorus flatly refused to fall into the same trap. They recommended that the scouts be treated as a wartime casualties. Or under a parchment, the army captured a supply carrier and overflowing with arcane books. When the disfavored started a bonfire of forbidden text, the Scarlet Chorus rescued the troops from the flames and attacked. We decreed that the disfavored are welcome to burn their half of the plunder, but the Scarlet Chorus has the right to claim the other half, provided you first review the text, first to eliminate any that touched on forbidden knowledge. According to the disfavored wish, you go. Okay, let's go for that. Wait, let's. Uh, yeah, let's, let's, let's review the text. I like more knowledge. Scarlet Chorus agreed to your generous terms and you set to poring over every manuscript before it was handed over. The work took several evenings, and you came away with a glimpse of truth better left unknown. Taking the burden upon yourself was a less risky alternative than, than disseminating it among Karras' ranks, though it didn't help you sleep at night. Fine. Crude and moral dwindled as the siege party realized the enemy would win this war of attrition. Tudan sent word that Kairos' patience had run thin. The overlord would cast an edict of fire on the enemy. The parchment arrived in a slender case of engraved iron, written on it the words of a spell powerful enough to destroy the vellum citadel. You had the choice of when to read the edict. Reading it at sunrise would offer your enemies no warning of the devastation to come. You could also wait until sunset, giving them ample time to flee or make amends. Opting to give the enemy no quarter, you put no. We want to, we want them to give a chance. This is going to affect us later, and we want them to be known that we were honorable. Just my opinion. Uh, granting their request, you met with the enemy under a blue flag of peace and warned them of their doom, giving the core spies and the enemy a chance to run. Hour before sunset, numerous figures were spotted fleeing the citadel. As the sun dipped under the horizon, you read the words of the edict. The earth, the earth shook, and red-orange light glowed in the foundation of the red sprawling citadel. Bubbling up from under the library, a torrent of lava heaved with explosive force, gushing from windows and between loose bricks, melding wind winding trenches in the surrounding land. Days later, the flames still raged on. The conflagration continually fed and renewed by the power of the edict. And goes the city. The edict of fire. The armies of Kairos left the devastation of Bilum's citadel in peace. From the day forward, the tears came to know the once noble citadel as the burning library. This was an undisputed loss of resources, knowledge, culture, and life. But a message had been a message had been sent. Overlord will not tolerate defiance. You didn't have long to rest before Tunan called you into service once more. You were one of the last to depart from the mountains, and as you journeyed off, you spotted a few campfires in the mountains. They were mere specks dwarfed by the inferno. The last gasps of survivors, or perhaps looters from Curus's army, bored 
and daring enough to pick through the ashes. So let's do one more when we finally get to the game. Okay, you have reached the end of Karis' conquest. Do you want to continue or erase the progress and start over? Continue. Hmm. Oh boy. It sets up an interesting prelude to uh, the whole story, in my opinion. The year is 431, and Kairos' invasion has shattered all major opposition in the tiers. The Younger Realms, the Bastard Tier, the Free Cities. All who defied Kairos lay broken by battle, or bowed in surrender. The two armies of the Overlord, the Disfavored and the Scarlet Chorus, now control our lands. But our will is not yet extinguished. Not entirely. In the Valley of Vendrian's Well, those of us unwilling to bow to Kairos have banded together in defiance. Violating an oath of surrender from two years prior, we have staged a bloody uprising, murdering the disfavored and Scarlet Chorus garrison in a midnight assault. With their main forces spread across the tiers, the Disfavored and Scarlet Chorus redeploy to Vendrian's Well, to crush the Resistance. But months pass, with no definitive battle. As disagreement and discord paralyze the Archons, we bide our time, and wait for our message of insurrection to spread across the tiers. The Overlord is not amused, and Kairos has one message for the Archons. Crush the Oathbreakers, or die. Kairos backs this threat with an edict, a magical commandment that can slay all in the valley should the order be ignored. The honor of proclaiming this edict fell to you. Sent across the mountains to Vendrian's Well, you carry the Overlord's edict to read before the Archons. As you finally make your way through the winding mountain passes into the valley, the ground trembles, and Kairos's magic seals the way behind you. You are trapped in Vendrian's Well, with Kairos's armies and the Oathbreakers. The only way to survive is to fulfill the terms of the Overlord's Edict, in any way that you can. Dun 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 dun. Okay. Now that uh, we have done all the, the prelude stuff and set up of our story, we will end this episode here. The next episode will start with the first real episode of the game. Hope you guys have enjoyed it until now, and hope you will follow me on this epic journey, which we will take in the name of the Overlord. See you guys next time. Whack it.